Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today I'm gonna to be touching on what is the best country to form a tech startup if you are not an American. Okay, and we're gonna go through a few of the different options, give you some ideas, and finalize on what I believe the best choice is uh, based on tax, based on you know access to labor, banking, many, many other things, and, uh, and we'll dive into that. If you're interested in these subjects of international business, uh, you know, offshore structuring, tax planning, asset protection, residencies, citizenships, etc. <laughs> By all means, please click the link below, cryo.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer, book a call with me. Otherwise, you can also check out our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. And please, before we get going, smash the subscribe button, click the notification bell, get notified, updated, and tell all your friends about these. You know, we're trying to build our following and get some things out there. It really helps us. So really appreciate whatever support you can give us. All right. So... Uh, this is kind of a timely topic in the sense that uh, I have a, a project that I'm doing. We're building some software, really cool uh, collaboration platform. And so it's like a tech startup, right? So uh, to give some background, I have not done uh, in the past one of these things where, you know, you try and raise a bunch of venture capital and grow the company and things like that. I've been involved in that space. I've worked with angel investors and uh, startups and things like this. But, uh, but I've never done this thing where I'm like really pushing uh, that. And so as kind of one of my projects that I have going on right now, we're building some software, which A, is useful for our business, but hopefully will be useful for some other businesses. And so uh, in the process of discussing that and you know, uh, investment and things like that, we, uh, th this conversation comes up. And I think that it's useful to consider it differently right now than you have throughout a lot of history, okay? So if we were to scroll back 20 years to uh, around the year 2000, I think it's very clear that the place to do this would have been Silicon Valley, right? Okay, maybe like obviously Amazon and Microsoft got their start in Seattle, uh, but oh, actually Microsoft ironically started in New Mexico and then they moved to Seattle. Uh, but I think that, you know, probably they started before 2000. By the time you hit about 2000 and in that space, uh, Silicon Valley was just the dominant place. And the reason was access to capital, for one, like just massively larger amounts of capital, middle management talent to help you scale a business quickly, and uh, just kind of like thinking bigger, et cetera, okay? So yeah, you could try and do it in Denmark, you could try and do it in Sweden, you could try and do it in Germany, you could try and do it in Canada, you could try doing it in a bunch of these places. And the truth is that as uh, on a per capita basis, the number of uh, unicorn, that means over a billion dollar startups that came out of Denmark and Sweden, uh, was very high. But that being said, I think that that was more a function of uh, the educational ecosystem environment. I think it was more a function of the people being there than people being able to move there and benefit from it, if that makes sense. So if you're like me and you're in a situation where you could be anywhere and where do you choose to go, where do you choose to go? I think it's a really valuable thing to ask and an interesting uh, talk by Reid Hoffman, who's the founder of LinkedIn, also uh, was one of the co-founders of PayPal. Very interesting, successful entrepreneur. He wrote a book called Blitzscaling, if you want to check it out. Uh, great book. Uh, he gave a talk I was watching recently where he was talking about how one of the important skills of a, a founder is to go where it is important to go. And depending on the nature of your business, that may vary. So for instance, he talked about how Groupon was founded in Chicago and it's very sales heavy, which wouldn't really have worked in Silicon Valley, right? So not all startups need to be in the same place. For instance, if you're in the movie industry, you know, California makes a lot more sense than being in Ohio, right? That's just kind of the nature of the industry. So we're talking in this case about a tech startup. And, uh, and the question is where to go and in particular, what I'm thinking here is not necessarily where you will be, not necessarily where your team will be, but where your company will be, okay? The reason I bring this up is I remember, maybe it was like about five years ago, one of our clients uh, was, they had a successful company already established. Uh, they were from outside of the US and they're interested in raising venture capital. Now, if they raised money in Asia, they were getting a valuation at the time of about 75 million. And if they raised in Silicon Valley, they were getting 125 million. So they were interested in forming companies and we were kind of working with them on the tax planning because as non-Americans, they were gonna have all these consequences of going and getting set up in the US. But the problem at the time was that almost all VCs were only willing to deal with US companies, okay? So that brings us to the present. We're now five or so years later 
the uh, startup ecosystem and the deal funding that's happened in Southeast Asia, kind of uh, China, Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, uh, that area has now reached a similar level to what we see in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley itself is kind of having this dispersal. You see uh, companies like Social Capital who have led the charge on investing in kind of unconventional places and doing really well with it. We have seen in Europe, uh, by far the most deals get funded in the UK, uh, but you know you have small amounts in, uh, in other places, Germany, uh, uh, France, obviously, uh, like Netherlands, uh, Scandinavia, etc. right? And so you think though, I'm thinking ahead, right? I'm trying to think ahead like five, 10 years to the point where maybe you're gonna have an exit, you're gonna have success, right? You might not, but you know, that's the case. And, and where is kind of the business friendly market? Where are things going? So from my standpoint, there, it is true that there isn't an easy answer to this question because it does depend on your business. So all these things, if you have a question about it, please reach out to me. Uh, again, you can book a call with me and we can talk about it and I'll go through with you what might apply to your business because there's a strong reason to believe in some cases, for instance, that you would wanna be in UK or somewhere in Europe, right? Obviously, if you're an American, it makes sense to be in the US. Maybe because of your industry, it makes sense to be in some place in particular. Maybe you're doing you know, something to do with fashion or you know, whatever. But increasingly, the location in a lot of these respects doesn't matter that much. What matters is, hey, listen, I want to get good uh, people. I want to manage them well. I want to have a great team. Uh, I want to have access to capital. I want to have great, uh, great treatment in terms of, uh, like from a tax regulatory standpoint, and I want great infrastructure. Now, bearing in mind, uh, I was assisting on a project recently where we decided to do it in the U.S. Uh, for some other reasons. There were some regulatory reasons why it made sense to be in the U.S. So this is why I'm saying, like, it's not always going to be straightforward. Uh, in particular, I think the two things to be aware of are regulatory and uh, financial infrastructure. Okay, these two things you do, know, do want to be aware of. However, besides that, I look at it as I say, okay, like where are the markets that we can take advantage of? It seems like there's a default amongst a lot of people to go after the U.S. market, which makes the U.S. market the most competitive market. And there's some real opportunities to go after some alternative markets and really be able to compete in that space with less competition and then kind of expand out from there. Okay, so that's one thing that I think is worth noting. Second of all, uh, to me, when you're a small business, you want to have favorable regulations working for you. And you also want to be thinking long term, what's it going to look like in terms of taxes, in terms of an exit, etc. Third thing I think that's very important is where are the growing markets? So to me, this is one of the really tipping the scale things. To me, the future is Asia, period, okay? Maybe you can argue like something for the Middle East, some things like this. Look, Europe is done. They're like, time is over. They, uh, they're on the decline. Okay, yes, Germany is still a well-run country. Things still work pretty well. Yes, UK, there's still opportunities. Things are still good there, etc. But this is like the downward trend. If you just look at po like demographic populations, right? Consider that there's about 800 million people in Europe uh, and there's a lot of languages there. So just from a language standpoint, this is a pretty fractured market for you. It's not really that, uh, that fantastic. I find that work ethic, rise of talent, increases in productivity, et cetera, are not coming primarily out of Europe. Europe is primarily an environment that's feeling more regulated. It's more difficult to do things. They're anti the rich. They're, you know, so on and so forth. Not, uh, not great. European capital markets generally are not fantastic, okay? Uh, again, there's a lot of deals that get funded out of the UK, so it's not entirely true. Uh, what they are pretty good on is a lot of the fintech type stuff. Uh, they brought in the EMI regulations. Uh, there's, at least you have like a sufficiently diverse ecosystem of countries that are competing there that that's somewhat helpful. So there are some types of businesses that I would definitely start in, uh, in Europe. And if I was to do that, you know, typically UK, maybe if you, can ha if you have the right connections there. The problem is if you're not deeply connected there, you can have problems with banking, etc. You know, although you have like some uh, regulations and things like that in, say, Lithuania, in Estonia, etc., you know, realistically, the talent pool is not very deep there. You probably don't want to go live there. You're probably not going to have very good proximity to other startups, etc. I don't think it's that great an opportunity. Okay. So, uh, and then the U.S. I think again, the U.S. is on the downward, uh, the downward slide. Again, you can kind of look at, you know, just the, number, the demographics, the number of people. Okay, you've got a market of 350 million people. Uh, they do have a lot of money. The GDP is quite high, right? 
GDP of the US is similar to the GDP of Europe as a whole. So, you know, there is, there is certainly that. Uh, but I just don't see that it's a rising tide in the same way. I see that it's a very competitive space. And, uh, and I don't see that it's becoming or likely to become much more business friendly. Okay. So, of course, there's reasons to engage with it. But mm. so where does this leave you? Well, to me, when you're doing this type of business, you, capital markets matter a lot. And the problem is you don't really want to be in China today because there's a lot of problems with being in China, both from uh, concerns locally within China, as well as external perceptions of you. So although the Chinese market, I think you want to be able to tap into it. I think there's a lot of value there. You don't want to be right in there. Uh, you can look at India. India is just not a refined enough market as far as I'm concerned. I don't think you want to be there. I think, okay, you can employ people there. I don't, I have one person who works for me full time uh, there right now. But generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of employing people in India as like my top, top place. Although there's a lot of access to talent and although the costs are relatively low, I find that the cultural differences make it tougher to employ people than in Eastern Europe. So I tend to prefer to employ people in Eastern Europe, although I've now started to employ some people in Africa and have a very great experience. I love, I love working with them. Um, so that's, that's something to consider. Uh, so where does this leave you? Well, you kind of want to access those markets, in my opinion. Uh, you want to have solid financial infrastructure. You want to have a great capital market where you can raise capital. You want to have uh, a good tax environment, a good regulatory environment, a good environment for like its ease of doing business. To me, where does this leave you? It leaves you in Singapore. So I don't think that necessarily you should uh, plan on living in Singapore. I don't think you should necessarily plan on employing your people in Singapore. But I think as the place to start your company and to base it out of, this is a fantastic place. Uh, let's just kind of take a look. So first of all, tax rates wise, the corporate tax maxes out at 17% and they have uh, a situation where they have a company called the single imputation system, meaning that when they pay out, uh, you don't pay taxes on dividends. That's very cool, right? They have no capital gains tax. They have no CFC rules. Both great things for us. Very good. Uh, then what have you got? You've got a situation where you have really robust, like there's a lot of capital in that part of the world. And regional investors are very comfortable with investing into companies in Singapore. So that's really good. I don't think that it's a great place to employ people because it's way too competitive a market. And so your costs are going to be high, but you can go right across the way to Malaysia. You can go to like the surrounding countries really easily and work with that. The compliance, the filings, et cetera, like they're just efficient. Things work well in Singapore. So unless you need to access financial infrastructure, in, oh, and you just don't, I don't think you have the strange regulatory uncertainties, the weird socialist moves, et cetera, that you get in some of these places. Like it's just a place to me that is not just business friendly, but long-term business friendly. So there are some reasons that maybe for certain types of industries, obviously if you're in CBD or something, you're not going to Singapore. Uh, if you're in something that requires lots of freedom of speech or something, you're not going to Singapore. But for a large number of companies, I think that is a great place to go. And so, you know, that's personal, uh, personal view, kind of like balancing everything out. Uh, and I, based on, you know, I'll tell you that, oh, you contrast it with Hong Kong because that might be the one. Hong Kong is just too uncertain right now. It's, uh, there's too much of an issue. You could contrast it with Middle East. There just isn't the developed capital markets there. So uh, for the record, I am doing that myself. So, you know, skin in the game sort of thing. Uh, if you're interested in some assistance with doing something like this, please contact me. Happy to, uh, happy to help you figure out what is best for you. As I said, you know, this is generally speaking, I think this is kind of the direction that I would point people in. That's why I'm doing it myself. But uh, the reality is it does vary person to person. And so it's worth doing some analysis and figuring out, okay, for you, what makes sense? Where are your staff going to be? What are your sales tax consequences? What type of things are you selling? What's your business model, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway. If you liked that, please uh, click the like button, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, uh, and you know, tell me what you think about you know best places to do tech startups, uh, what factors you would consider, etc. If you're interested in uh, learning more about this and getting some assistance, book a call with me, clarity.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer. There's a link below. Check out our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com, and I will see you guys on the next video.